In the last video, I was talking about switching from my Canon Mark III over here to the Panasonic S5. And I have now officially had my first contract here with this brand new camera and the, uh, the lenses that I have available. So I thought I'd do my first impressions. One use, one full event, one thing where I didn't need this to fail. I needed it to execute and work. And uh, spoiler alert, it did with a few very specific and very, uh, I think, poignant caveats. So what do I think of this camera? First off, it's gonna resemble a lot of the same stuff that I love in the GH5s. I mean, the accessible lightweight body, the full frame looks absolutely beautiful. The, the photos turned out uh, lovely. They have that depth and that bokeh um, that I enjoy here in my, uh, my larger full frame DSLR. Uh, it is light, however, the lens, of course, anytime you have a 7200 on it in the front, it is a, a heavy and aggressive lens. I may do a lens comparison here in a little bit to see how these resolve. I was able to pick this up and start running with it fairly quickly and fairly accessible. There's a few things that I had to adjust or change, uh, specifically the balance between how easily that eye um, reader sort of pops on and pops off. Uh, I shifted that. And what other settings did I go into? I went in to make sure that my photos were good and I had to deal with autofocus a lot. That is where I spent the majority of my time learning how to use this camera because it's a little bit interesting. There are a lot of different autofocus settings. There's some really cool ones that we'll get into, but I have to say the biggest criticism of the S5 or of the Panasonic line so far is 100% accurate and true. The uh, utilization of the autofocus, specifically when it comes to late night or evening shooting, is it's just it's just really bad. It nowhere comes close to comparing with my Canon, uh, even a Canon that is four or five years old at this point, still is out shooting the technology in here when it comes to low light autofocus. I cannot for the life of me, and I might be doing something wrong, but I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get this thing to grab focus consistently when you're anywhere into early to late evening. I mean, and this was bad enough to the point where I switched to full manual mode with my 7200 here and just shot the rest of the event in full manual. Now, it does some interesting things in full manual that I'm not really used to. And I don't know if I like so far, I am enjoying it because it does counterbalance that poor autofocus. And that's gonna be uh, the ability for the digital screen to magnify when you're trying to grab focus. It has focus peaking just like the GH5 does, which means what is in focus is gonna be outlined in a sharp blue, and it magnifies in or cuts in, which can be annoying when you're trying to frame a picture. So I don't love that, because it, it does take away from uh, sort of the, the whole picture, the whole visual that you see. It took a little bit of getting used to to have it jump every time I went to zoom, or every time I even bumped the zoom, but on the other side of that, because the low light autofocus is so poor, that is actually a pretty acceptable counterbalance. I can cut in and make sure that I'm getting something quick. Now, the question for me is when I do, an, when I do a wedding or a more uh, hectic event, how is this autofocus going to be competing with the space that I'm in? Now, usually I'll be using a flash. I did get the Godex uh, uh, big old like round head flashes. We'll do a review of those at some point. Took me a little while to figure out how to get these attached, um, but that flash did allow me to focus a lot more cons consistently because of course it's gonna do the laser beams that allow this to see and identify how far it is away and communicate that accurately. So uh, having a flash, having a laser will help, will solve that problem, but just the in-body itself, yeah, low light anything, even with a wider lens, even with something that uh, isn't, uh, a, you know, this is a 7200 2.8, uh, you know, even with something that isn't as closed off as a 2.8, which sounds ridiculous to say, uh, you're still just not, you're still just not getting as much light as you need. Now, one thing that I find really cool with this camera, something that I experimented with, which was turning off the sound. Uh, so you can actually make it so that it is a silent shooter. And I mean, it is full on, you're pressing the button, it's taking photos, and it feels freaky because it feels like you're doing nothing at all. This is the first time I've used a digital camera that has had that uh, sort of accessibility. Um, 
I really like it. It's going to allow me to do nature photography. It's going to allow me to do weddings without ever being a distraction point. I always feel like the is, you know, it, it always takes a little bit of the attention off of what's really important when it comes to an event or when it comes to the day. Uh, this allows you to be much more like a ninja, much more like a sleuth, popping around the corners um, and shooting photos. Now, the thing that I had to learn is that the Godex flashes that I use, they need that shutter acquisition or, or whatever it is. They cannot be shooting in silent mode if that flash is going to be triggering and going off. So you have to switch it off and then back on. And I don't know if there's a balance when it comes to the autofocus. I didn't try it uh, both ways. I didn't find it to be significantly different. But yeah, that was, that was another one of the main things that I experienced. The ability to shoot silently was really, really cool. Uh, a little bit freaky, took a lot of getting used to. Um, but overall, this camera performed well throughout the day. This camera performed well throughout the contract. I am glad that I have it. I, I certainly am considering picking up a second. Feels a little bit fragile. I mean, it's built well. Uh, it is certainly sturdy, but with this such a heavy lens on here, I'm usually trying to grip from the bottom of this because I'm just always concerned that I'm going to be stressing the, uh, the connection point there just by picking it up and letting it balance. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... I think that's most of my thoughts. The usability, the back screen functionality, pretty standard. Um, it's just what I, I, you know, the menu system and everything was set up just the same way that I that my GH5s are for the most part. There really wasn't anything that I utilized or was confusing. I did find the uh, button out here in the front to detach the lens. Um, a little bit weird. It's, it's right there. It's a little bit weird to get your hands onto and the lens click on way low. So instead of that dot being high, the dot's all the way down there. So a it, it, little bit getting used to compared to what the uh, Canon does. The Canon just gives you a lot more clearance there. Uh, and it's over on this side that you actually de-click. So I'm using my right hand to place and lock very comfortable. Whereas over here on this tiny little camera, I'm using my right hand to actually press the button, my left to twist. Um, I'm still not functionally, I'm still not very comfortable with that. And they did something strange with their lens, which will be in my larger 7200 review. This lens, when it switches from manual uh, to, to auto mode, actually pops back and forth. So how can I show this? Take this off. Mm, what do I need to do? Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. But uh, basically, when you're shooting, this slides back and forth. This right here. This slides back and forth. And that's the difference between manual and full auto. I'm worried about a little bit of dust and grime and, and dirt getting into that leverage system. Um, it continues its free access when it's not maneuvered like that. I guess it just doesn't lock in. It's an interesting approach. Instead of a little switch, it's a full pull system. I kind of like how easy it is to do while you're shooting. Um, so there's a benefit to that, but I think such a big actuating system there runs the risk of getting um, a little bit of dirt and it certainly took a little bit of getting used to. I couldn't figure out why I was not able to go full manual. Uh, and then for a while I couldn't figure out why I was full manual. It turns out it was just my hand sliding that back and forth. Uh, any other main thoughts I have on this other than dropping it multiple times? The switch between ISO, white balance, all of that's pretty easy. ISO has a little bit of perforation. I didn't really shoot off of a single single shutter. Oh, the different modes of autofocus that they have, because there's some really cool modes in here. I mostly stayed on my single center point, which is what I use on the Mark III. However, there's a face detect in this, which I've never used before. And I think it's a really neat technology. You see, I can focus on this middle center point, but if there's a face anywhere in this range, it's going to grab an autofocus to that position. So it's this, this technology that's enhancing my ability to just take quick photos and making sure they're always pinpoint on the person, pretty mind-blowing. And there's a lot of other autofocus points and positions. I honestly don't expect I'll use the vast majority of them. It's nice that they're providing so many opportunities uh, from rings to gridded patterns to animal detection. I think for me, that middle focus point with face detect on for events and different things like that is really going to be uh, the sweet spot. It's going to be where I aim. After I discovered that, I started util use, utilizing that for the rest of the event, and the photos turned out great. I mean, there was uh, there was less out-of-focus waste than I would typically have or expect from something like my Mark III. 
the only other point is going to be the beautiful uh, actuating screen. Now, I do find it a little bit hard to grab this, but I did keep it closed for the majority of it, just so your face oils and stuff aren't always getting on this touchscreen here. Uh, but this is just so nice. It's so nice to have the ability to pop this out, close it up so it's safe and secure, but when you need, uh, you can swing it. Now, the only thing is it keeps you from uh, sort of uh, looking down at the camera all the time, double checking your settings, double checking your ISO. Oh, right, the other thing, the other weird thing. This is a digital camera, meaning the screen I'm looking through is fully digital. Instead of a mirror that allows you to see into the actual real world, you're converting the real world into its digital identity. I am still not quite sure how I feel about that digital space. Now, my eyes were fine with it. The the lens itself and being able to see everything clearly and can see, you know, that's that's nice. But the hard part was it has an interesting way of reading or converting that information to me so I know exactly what the photo that I'm getting is going to look like. Now, I know that's also true here in this, but in this, I'd shoot a photo and I'd clearly see that bar down below letting me know where the balance was. I had a really good feel for how dark an environment was and where and how this is gonna shoot. I'm still not there with this yet. And so when it flashes, when it takes that photo and the stops are so swingy and that bar down below is a little bit smaller than I would like for me to be able to get that information. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just some balance points when it comes to moving from a mirrored DSLR to a uh, to a mirrorless uh, full frame DSLR, but overall impressions very positive. I think the concerns and the criticisms around this lens and the, around this camera are accurate, uh, but I think they might be a little bit overblown. I don't rely on full auto all the time. Um, I can shoot manual very comfortably, and I think it's a good skill for for most people to have. I don't really utilize all these other additional settings, so I can't talk towards them. The custom settings, the A, P, and S. I'm always running manual in almost any environment. Um, I'm interested to see how auto tracking works, people coming down the aisle. Those are some things that I haven't been able to play with yet. But yeah, this is gonna be uh, first impressions of the Panasonic S5. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. And let me know if there's any questions you have. I might do more in-depth uh, little deep dives into this camera as I start uh, learning how to use it. I I'm not interested in doing product reviews for the sake of product reviews. But what I certainly can do is I can talk to you about my experience as a professional uh, working in this space, learning how to use the equipment that I have, and finding solutions if the equipment doesn't perform the way I need it to. Because at the end of the day, I don't care what it is, how it's used, or how rugged or, or you know fancy it can be. As long as it does what I need it to, I'm good with that. Uh, so, that'll, uh, that'll be a video. I don't know really how I'm going to end this one.